Time again for Talking Dogs with Ian Grant, owner of Vermont Dog Boarding and Behavior, VFW Drive Hyde Park. It's the show that delves into the training, socializing, behavior, nutrition, and wellness of your dog. And brought to you by Guys Farming Yard with locations in Morrisville, Montpelier, Williston, and St. Albans. And we're back with the trainer, Ian Grant, and the topic this week is how to assess energy in both you and your dog. Now, this is information you got from your recent trip out to yeah. uh, Los Angeles. And so why is it important that we know our energy levels, um, me and my dog? Well, I think, um, so in terms of energy, I think it's important that we understand both our energies, but also kind of what the intentions are behind that energy. So, you know, we really look at energy as a combination of both your emotions and in your, and your intentions. If you're getting ready to take your, your dog for a walk, I think we should kind of assess that in our dog first so we know kind of what energy we're dealing with, how we're going to head out the door, the dog's leashed up. There's a lot of times I think there are people that dread taking their dog for a walk. And that is not a great energy to share with your dog uh, just because they may not enjoy taking their dog for a walk. And that negative type of energy mm. kind of spills over. I mean, the dogs are pretty and they, they kind of know what you're feeling more than we think. You know, the old adage of when you get home and the dog had gotten into the loaf of bread or the garbage. <laughs> and as soon as you walk through the door, they look at you and they immediately know that you're not happy. <laughs> you can't tell me that that energy is not at the forefront of everything for that dog. So the same can be said if you're frustrated before you even take your dog for a walk or angry or any of those emotions or even too excited, those are going to flow through the leash to the dog and it's going to affect how you walk your dog. So the first step we really need to do is assess our dog when we're trying to do something with them is assess them and understand that as much as we assess them, that can also change by the moment too. So it's it's kind of a, you got to go with the flow kind of thing. So what do you do if uh, the energy is not where it should be? I mean, do you just uh, postpone the walk or do you uh, have to do something else? This is why I say as soon as you grab the leash, you've punched in. Yeah. Once <laughs> they've know? seen that, I mean, they, you, there's no turning back after that. Right. So if you have a 30-minute time block that you're ready to take your dog for a walk, but for some unknown reason your dog is over-the-top excited to go for this particular walk, you've already punched in. So if it takes you 10 minutes to get outside from inside the door, then you have 20 minutes left to go for your walk. So those times are so important for the relationship with you and your dog, and they're so important for the routine that we need to just stick to our guns of, okay, before we leave the house, we're going to be chilled out. We're not going out there because you're so excited. So we have to make it so that both the owner and the dog are in sync. If dog's too excited and human's just chill, doesn't even care, it's not a good match. Yeah. Uh, if the human is way frustrated and angry and the dog is nice and calm, it's not a good match. So we have to do our best to get in sync with each other before we can actually start the walk. Yeah. So, and I know we've talked about this subject in our prior shows that sometimes it's just a matter of just uh, sitting down, just putting the leash down for a little while and just waiting for them to chill. But then if you're going to, as you mentioned, if you're going to do a 30 minute walk, you take that deduction off of, uh, off of the total walk. You don't just, you don't do 30 minutes no matter when you start. You know, I tell my clients all the time, like, there's going to be times where you're going to hit a setback. You're going to hit a speed bump. Those are the times that you stick to your guns and still follow through with your routine. So the example that you're bringing up is is a perfect example of when things are starting to go a little sideways, take a step back, take some time, let the dog settle back down, and then get ready and go again. Because those are the times that are really, really important. And we have to understand, too, what the dog is going through. Not that we're trying to snuff out any expression that the dog is giving us we have to take the time to go okay i understand you're too you're you're excited but this has to come down a little bit before we can actually go anywhere and make it a productive walk yeah but you do have to do the walk eventually though don't you i mean once you even if what happens if you get <laughs> to 30 minutes and you're not even out the door yet that you know, it's funny all these years i've never had anybody ask me that question is what if it takes all 30 Guess what? You take the leash off, you unhook it, you you put the leash away, and you go do whatever you had planned after your walk. So you don't do the walk then? No, because you're Under those circumstances. Yeah, you're burning more fuel in that dog's brain during those 30 minutes inside the house than you would if you let that dog drag you down the street. And okay. and, you're, and then you're not teaching the dog anything. Right. Nobody's course, learning. Of course, the dog may – isn't the dog going to be upset saying, hey, you're putting the leash away. Where, aren't we going now? What's going on? No, because you've burned enough fuel from that dog. There's a good chance that they're going to be very tired after 30 minutes of trying to figure out what in the heck is going on. 
why do we not go for a walk? And you put the leash away. You've put a big wrench in the gears. And and they know that and, it's not going to happen. Yeah, so next time it may take 28 minutes. There, there you go. <laughs> it's always a learning experience with dogs. So yes. man, no oh man. So back with our question from the doggy bag in just a moment here on Talking Dogs. Back to Talking Dogs with Ian Grant from Vermont Dog Boarding and Behavior, VFW Drive High Park. Find out more about his facility and programs by going to Vermont Dog Boarding and Behavior, that's all spelled out, dot com. Our question this morning, Ian, is my dog keeps pulling me on our walk. Is there something I can do to prevent this? Now, could it be that uh, the energy levels are out of sync with there this? There you go. Oh, ding, 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 ding. Uh, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm going ha- to have my degree before you know it. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so that is the uh, the big component of this. The other part of it is we have to make sure that the tools that we're using are, are being used correctly, that we're not walking in an area that's a super high level of stimulation for the dog that they just can't. They, they can't handle it. They can't focus. I was with a client a couple of days ago, and we were on a brand new. The dog had never been on that trail before. And so something like that can be very exciting to the dog. New area, new surroundings, new scent, smells, everything. In those situations, we have to take our time to at least establish to the dog how we're going to walk in new environments. It's very, very important. So uh, energy comes first, and then after that comes how are these tools being used? Is my dog aware of these tools and how they're supposed to be used? And then after that, then we can get into a, a good vibe and a repetition of, of being in that new area, walking and making sure that we can create a pattern for our dog to follow. So what happens if we're, we're starting out our walk and everything's going fine, then all of a sudden the, the dog, uh, Tika, starts pulling and then yeah. you get to kind of self-correct them on the move then pretty much, don't you? You can't really go back to the house and start over. Right. So if, you, if you're already, you know, 10 minutes away from your house and, and she starts up, if it's minor enough where you can just give a couple little tugs on the leash, nothing major, just right. like a, hey, 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 all right, cut it out. If that works, then you can keep on walking. If it's beyond that, I'm probably just going to stop, get the dog into a sit, and we're going to stay there. The only time I'm not going to do that if, is if we're very close to a stimulation that set the dog off. Then I'm going to need distance. But if it's something that a car went by that they didn't like the sound of, well, we're going to sit here till you settle down, and then we'll continue our walk. Right. And we should emphasize it's just a small tug. We aren't mm. wrenching the dog exactly. because now you're talking about a whole different uh, cases yeah. here. Yes. So it's got to be very gentle. Yes. You know? I mean, you want to have a good relationship with your dog. You don't want to mess it up. Exactly. If you have a question for Ian, you can email him directly to info at vermontdogboardingandbehavior.com. Well, next week, the topic is multiple dogs in the house. Oh, dear. It's like monkey see, monkey do. So uh, do you find a little bit of that going on in your – you've got three dogs in your house. Oh, yeah. 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 There's definitely stuff that they picked up on from Gemma, who actually, by the way, just turned four years old. <gasps> wow. Wow. If you can believe it. Oh, man. Um, so, yeah, they, they pick up things from each other. So I figured we'd talk about that. It's a conspiracy against the owner. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and we'll see about it next week on Talking Dogs with Ian Grant, brought to you by Guys Farming Yard with locations in Morrisville, Montpelier, Williston, and St. Albans. And for the trainer, Ian Grant, I'm Roland the Joy, and we are Talking Dogs. Talking Dogs.